بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ ویلکم ٹو لیکچر نمبر فورٹین فار بیسک انجینئرنگ میکینکس ان دس لیکچر وی ووڈ بی کورنگ واٹ وی کال مومنٹ آف اے کپل ان آور پریویس لیکچر وی ووڈ لوکنگ ایٹ مومنٹس وچ واز جسٹ دا ٹینڈنسی آف اے فورس ٹو پروڈیوس روٹیشنس اباؤٹ اینی گیون پوائنٹ سو ان دس لیکچر وی ووڈ بی لوکنگ ایٹ اے ویری اسپیسیفک ٹائپ آف اے مومنٹ Uh, which is called the moment of a couple and so the basic concept of a moment of a couple, couple moment of a couple is that whenever we have two forces uh, which are equal and opposite and they are separated f by a distance d so for example here we look at, at this picture so we have this force f which is uh, pointing towards the left and we have a similar force minus f which is pointing towards the right and they are not acting at the same point but they are acting uh, at a distance d apart from each other so uh, this is what we call a couple of forces so this is the definition and next we will see why this definition is useful and helpful for us to solve this different things so the next thing we look at we want to look at is what is the moment produced by these two forces and so the moment produced by this force f uh, is uh, from any given point o is uh, if we calculate the moment of these two forces from any given point o that moment can be written as total moment as we saw in the previous lectures is just a sum of the individual moments so the total moment of these two forces can be calculated by summing up the moments due to this force minus f and due to this force f so i can say that the total moment is just rb cross f which is the moment produced by this first force and the set plus ra cross minus f and we have this minus because we have this ra and we have a minus f uh, force pointing in the opposite direction and we can use the uh, distributive property of uh, cross uh, cross product to rewrite this term as this so we get rb minus ra crossed with f so what is this rb cross r uh, rb minus ra this rb minus ra is nothing but the vector between force minus f to f okay so i can rewrite this rb minus ra as just the vector r which is the position vector from the force minus f to f and it is perpendicular to both of these forces so i can rewrite the moment of these the this for these forces as just being equal to the position vector between these two forces crossed with the force itself so according to this definition this r vector is the vector from the minus f force to the f force so this is a vector that goes from the minus f uh, force whichever we call minus that the uh, we would whenever we have a couple we would have to Uh, call one of the force to be positive and uh, the other one would be the negative force and then r vector is the vector from the negative force towards the positive force and f vector is just the uh, vector of one of the forces which we are calling positive and so this formula itself tells us something very interesting about a couple that uh, this point r o is arbitrary so i could have chosen any other point o and i would still have ended up with the same formula so that tells us that the turning effect or moment of a couple is independent of the point o so previously uh, you might have noticed that any time we mention a moment we represent the point at which this moment is calculated so we would have a subscript here and we would have a subscript here so the reason why i, I have dropped this sub, subscript from both of these equations is simply because the moment of a couple is independent of the point 
so uh, what i really want to say is that you can uh, choose another point somewhere here and then you can perform all of these steps and at the end of the day you would still get the same moment so in in some sense the uh, moment of a couple does not depend on the point where we are calculating the couple so that is why a uh, uh, couple moment is also sometimes referred to as a free vector so in it uh, this vector can be moved about in in our rigid body and it does not affect anything the rotational effects of a couple are same at every point this is a important uh, and useful uh, uh, reason why we define couples and the second important reason for defining a couple is that uh, while a single force acting on any body would produce both uh, translation and rotation so whenever i apply a force on any body so let's we have we have this pen and we apply a force if if we have only one force acting on this pen so that force would try to rotate the body but it would also try to translate the body but whenever we have a couple so that couple only tries to rotate the body it does not try to uh, so a, a couple does not produce uh, any translation because the net force acting on that body is zero due to the couple so uh, if we have a body which has these two forces acting on it the resultant force is equal to zero because we have a force which is f and we have a force which is equal to minus f so effectively there is no resultant force acting on the body so it would not there would won't be any acceleration produced in the body but there would still be rotation produced in the body so i hope these two reasons convince you enough uh, to study couples in more detail okay so uh, this uh, like i said earlier so that, that that means that we can treat a couple as being a being a free vector and moment of a couple is independent of the reference point we could have chosen any reference point and we would still get the same couple okay so uh, like we, uh, we discussed before we can uh evaluate the moment of a couple either using its scalar representation and the scalar representation of uh, moment of a couple is more useful uh, when we have a force systems which are in uh, which are coplanar all the forces are in a plane then uh, we would be more inclined to use the scalar form of moment of a couple and the moment of a couple in, in the in its scalar form is just given by f times d where f is one of these forces so uh, so maybe this is f and d is the perpendicular distance between them so d is just the perpendicular distance between these two forces uh, and this is the moment uh, the uh, magnitude of the moment produced by this couple and as we discussed earlier uh, that uh, if we want to use vector formulation the moment vector of a vector moment of a couple is just the position vector from force my the minus f force to the plus f force and this f is the force vector okay so uh, so we would look at a couple of examples for uh, to get these concepts uh, uh, we, to get a better understanding of these concepts so now look at something which we call uh, equivalent couples so the definition of equivalent couples is that any time we have two couples uh, two force systems which are distinct the forces are different and the distances between them are different but they are producing the same couples same same couple moment uh, so uh, we would call these two couples to be equivalent so here we have an example uh so not uh, we have a 33 30, 30 newton force uh acting towards the right on this side and then we have a 30 newton force acting towards the left on this side and they are separated by a distance of 0.4 meters uh so this would produce a couple of 30 times 0.4 uh but and so there we have another force which is 40 newton force 
and uh, two 40 newton forces they are separated by a distance of 0.3 meters again this would also produce the same couple moment so this produces a couple moment of um, 12 newton meters uh, and the couple moment is clockwise and this also produces a 12 newton meter uh, couple moment and the couple moment in this case is also clockwise so we can say that these two couples are equivalent so let's look at another example we can have more than uh, two equivalent couples so let's assume that we have this so maybe a bit thinner so we we have this length here and let's assume that this length is let me try to make it close to 0.6 so let's assume that we have this length here and two forces are acting on this we have a force which is acting vertically downwards and then we have a force which is acting vertically upwards and so this force and we can say that this is a force which is 20 newton so maybe this is a force of 20 newtons and this is also 20 newtons and the distance between them we can say that the distance between them is 0.6 meters so here we have drawn a third couple uh, again the forces in this case are different their magnitude is different and their direction is different but this third force uh, this third couple is also producing uh, the same uh, couple moment which was 12 newton meters so we would say that all of these three couples are equivalent so let's move on uh, so uh, uh, couple moments in terms of uh, mom vector moments are can be treated exactly like uh, our previous moments uh, that means that the resultant of two couple moments is just the vector sum of those couples so notice here we have this a rigid body and uh, we assume that we have two couple moments acting on this body one couple moment is m1 and the other couple moment is m2 and the resultant couple moment is just going to be equal to m1 plus m2 uh, that is exactly like what we used to do uh, with regular moments okay so just to recap everything that we have done so far uh, we have defined something which is called a couple moment and the reason to define a couple moment there are there we looked at a, a couple of reasons uh, first of all couple moments are useful because uh, a couple moment vector is uh, a free vector so that means uh, we can choose whichever point to be our reference point and we'll still get the same moment and the second reason uh, was that a couple is a, is something which does not produce any translation but it only produces rotation and then we saw that how we can use vector and scalar analysis to uh, solve for a uh, couple moments okay so uh, so we would look at a couple of examples so this is the first example for today so the qu question states that determine the resultant couple moment of the three couples acting on the plate in figure 4-30 so we have these three couples acting on on this rigid body uh, this f1 force is uh, 200 pounds and another f1 force of 200 pounds is acting downwards uh, similarly we have f2 which is 450 pounds which is acting towards the left and a similar f2 force is 450 pounds towards the right and then we have this f3 which is 300 pounds and another F3 which is 300 pounds they are separated by a distance of 5 feet so uh, we want to find the resultant moment so as we discussed earlier resultant moments are just the sum of all the moments 
so we can say that the resultant moment maybe this is too big so the resultant moment is just going to be equal to sum of all the individual moments so and sum of all in this case we have only three moments so we are going to have f1 times d1 okay so let me just remove that and so f1 and time f1 is producing a clockwise moment so we can just continue with our convention that we would treat counter clockwise moments to be positive so we get minus f1 times d1 and f2 is also producing a clockwise moment so we would say that this is minus f2 times d2 so d1 is the perpendicular distance uh, this distance is going to be the distance uh, perpendicular distance to make the perpendicular distance let me just uh, extrapolate this line and so this is the line of action of this force f1 uh, so the perpendicular distance is just the distance d1 which is 5 4 feet uh, we cannot choose this distance to be our perpendicular distance let me just use a red color to clarify this distance red line is not the distance to be used for uh, in this formula because this is not the perpendicular distance a perpendicular distance is a distance between these two forces such that the, the, uh, the distance line forms a 90 degree angle with both of them okay so we have two terms we have already taken care of two of these terms how about the last one so the last one is going to be positive because f3 is producing a counterclockwise uh, f3 is also producing a clockwise movement uh, sorry f2 is pro producing a counterclockwise moment f1 is producing a clockwise moment and f3 is also producing a clockwise moment so f2 is producing a counterclockwise moment so this is going to be positive and then we have the third term which is minus f3 d3 so now we can just plug in the values so f1 is 200 times 4 and so the second term is plus 450 times 3 and the third term is again going to be minus that is 300 times 5 so this term, term comes out to be minus 800 and the unit for all of these is going to be pound feet so minus 800 so this is going to be equal to 1350 and this turns out to be minus 1500 so this turns out to be equal to minus 950 pound feet and so uh, we can either write it as a minus 950 or we can say this is equal to 950 pound feet and and the resultant is clockwise okay um, as we discussed in the previous lectures a negative sign simply means that the resultant is in the clockwise direction okay so i hope uh, all of these steps are clear um, so let's move on okay so we look at this other example uh, here again we want to determine the magnitude and direction of the coupled moment acting on the gear in figure 4-31a so this is our figure 4-31a and we want to find the coupled moment due to these two forces we have a force of 600 newton acting downwards at a 30 degree angle and then we have a 30 degree angle with the horizontal and again we have a 600 newton force acting with the upwards at the 30 degree angle with the horizontal and they form a couple so to find the moment of these two cup uh, uh, the resultant moment 
so we can say that the resultant moment is just in this case this is equal to f times d and this d is the perpendicular distance between the two um, so what is this perpendicular distance going to be so let me just we need to uh, draw a line like this and so the perpendicular distance in this case is just this distance so this is our distance t so this is the distance t uh, notice that we can use uh, a bit of trigonometry to find this distance z uh, but uh, we can be more clever than that and uh, we can do a simple trick to simplify our solution so what i really mean is that this is a correct method uh, you can use trigonometry and figure out the what the value of d is but i'm going to show you a much easier method uh, which does not involve that much of trigonometry uh, so the second method uh, depends on breaking down our force into its x and y components uh, so as we discussed earlier that uh, we sometimes it is easier to uh, break down our forces into their x and y components and then to find the moments of both of these forces separately so let me just show how we can do that the same trick here so again this force f can be broken down into its x and y components similarly this force f can be broken down into x and y components and so this force has two components this force has two components so because this angle is 30 degrees so i know that this force is going to be equal to 600 cos of 30 and this one is going to be equal to 600 sine of 30 similarly this force is going to be equal to 600 sine of 30 and this force is going to be equal to 600 cos of 30 so now our uh, you know calculation becomes much much easier that we can consider that rather than having one couple moment we have two couple moments one couple moment is formed because of the vertical forces and one couple moment is formed due to the horizontal forces so we can say that our resultant moment is just so the resultant moment is just equal to the sum of all the moments and the, what is the horizontal moment going to be equal to so the horizontal couple is producing a counterclockwise moment and which is equal to 600 cos of 30 and then the uh, distance between them is just going to be equal to the radius of this wheel which is 0.2 times point 0.2 and the second moment is due to the vertical forces and the vertical forces in this case are producing a, a clockwise moment so we get a minus 600 sine of 30 times point 0.2 uh, so we can just simplify the whole thing as being equal to 600 times point 0.2 is 120 times cos of 30 minus sine of 30 so this uh, and the units for these are newton meters so uh, by uh, breaking down or resolving our forces into forces into their x and y components uh, we have made our life much easier and made the calculation much simpler so let's look at this final example for today uh, so we want we have these two forces which are acting vertically one is acting vertically downwards and the other one is acting vertically upwards and we want to find the resultant couple moment due to these two forces and the, all the dimensions are given 
so that is this force is 25 pound this force is 25 pound and uh, this pipe is bent uh, downwards with an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal and this pipe it has a length of 8 inches and this pipe has a length of 6 inches uh, so uh, we would use uh, this this problem can also be solved using the scalar method but just to explain the method more clearly I, I would use the vector uh, formulation to, to solve for the moments so as we have seen earlier that the moment vector couple moment is simply equals to r crossed with f and so the force f was uh, whichever force we were considering to be positive so we can say that i am considering this force which is vertically upwards to be positive so in that case my force f is going to be simply equal to 25 k hat in pounds so that's my force the second thing that we need to use this formula is the the position vector from the first force towards the second force and this position vector uh, can be taken any vector to be any vector which is between these two forces so i can either choose this uh, vector along this pipe or i can simply choose the vector which is uh, perpendicular to both of these forces so let me just to explain it more clearly let me just use this vector so this is my sorry so i'm saying that this is my r vector for the calculations of this problem i'm going to consider this to be my r vector okay and just looking at this picture i can say that my r vector is just equal to so it has a y component uh, it has no y component it only has an x and a z component so the x component of this force is going to be this r vector is going to be positive and this is going to be equal to 6 uh, and cos of 30 and we put an i hat here and the z component is going to be negative and that is going to be equal to minus 6 sine of 30 j hat so this is our r vector and so this is our force the force is sorry this is not j hat this is going to be k hat because this is vertically upwards okay so now we have a force of 25 uh, and this whole thing has the units of inches because here rather than using feet we are in this problem we are using inches okay so just by using our determinant method to calculate the cross product we write it as i j k and first of all we have to write 6 cos of 30 6 sine of 30 0 and then we have 0 0 and 25 and we have a negative sign here because the j hat comp uh, sorry this has to be a k hat again i have made the same mistake twice so let me just rub it and rectify my mistake so this is going to minus 6 sine of 30 okay so uh, this gives us the vector uh, the moment to be equal to the only non-zero term is going to be this j hat component so this we get minus j hat times 25 times 6 cos of 30 so we get we get minus 129.9 j hat and the units in this case are pound inches so this is our moment which is uh, we can make sense of the negative sign in this case 
because uh, if we were to use the right hand rule we can see that these two forces are producing a, a moment vector which is in the minus j hat direction okay and notice that if i were to use this other vector so i would use that to in red so if we were to use this red vector as my r vector let me just redraw so it's the vector going from here to here so this vector would be i can call it r prime r prime is just going to was just going to be equal to um, 6 cos of 30 i had so i could have found my moment to be equal to r prime cross f also and this would again give the same result as it is pretty obvious from here also because uh, this term does not contribute this minus 6 sine of 30 this term does not contribute in our final moment okay so we can either use this vector r uh, which was 6 cos of 30 i hat minus 6 sine of 30 k hat inches or we could have chosen this r prime vector uh, by that logic we could have actually chosen any vector uh, which was along the line of action of the force so maybe we could have also used a vector which is something like this so this would be whatever r prime r double prime sorry and that was our r prime okay so um, uh, i hope the uh, concept of moment of a couple is uh, clear at this point so i'll see you in the next lecture inshallah assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh